Welcome to episode 15 of the Creator Forge podcast. Creator Forge is an educational organization dedicated to offering instructional media focused on how to prepare for work in creative fields in the entertainment industries. What forges great professional artists? That's the simple question we try to answer every episode as we interview professional artists about what they do, how they do it, and what advice they have for anyone who wants to pursue a similar career path. I'm Pat Bolin. I'm Jeremiah Clark. And today we've got Catherine Hudson, 2D illustrator and character designer, both at Floyd County and lots of freelance, including for DreamWorks, which I'm really excited to talk to you about. Hi, Catherine. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing great today. Are you excited to be here? Yes, I am. In my living room. <laughs> I know. It's very nice. It's very comfortable. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We try. It's it's uh, it's the green room, which you can actually touch from here, and then the dining room where we set up and actually do <laughs> our podcasting. So mm-hmm. anyway, so Catherine, uh, we like to start with like where you're at professionally now and then backtrack a little okay. uh, like halfway through and talk about kind of what got you there. So uh, we're going to start out with what are you doing professionally right now, first of all? Right now. Well, I am professionally, I'm working uh, full time at a company called Floyd County Productions. They're the people. We've heard of them. Yeah, you've heard of them. (laughs) I'm sure they've been mentioned a few times for people that live around here. Right. Um, They're the company that make Archer, the Mm -hmm. animated show that comes on. um, Well, now it's going to be FXX, um, the television show. Um, channel and um and also do you know i do work on that and uh other projects that we're working on at floyd county so that's my and your primary uh, position there is as character designer Designer, though yes so you Um, design the look and feel mm -hmm. of the characters i mean uh, with archer you know the main characters have already been established i mean we're you know we're about to be in season nine Mm -hmm. so um uh, but a lot of like like if you watched last season of Archer, it took place in the 1940s. So there was a lot of like outfit redesign and um, background character design and prop design. I mean, we had to redo pretty much everything because it took place in the past, wow. obviously. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, any kind of uh, especially the costuming, that was a big part of last season and this upcoming season. And um, so that uh, was one of my jobs. And also um, I do character design on pitches we do for new upcoming projects. Oh, that's cool. Now that's got to be where it gets a little exciting, right? You get to kind of branch out and do something a little different. I know. Yeah. Sometimes sometimes they'll come, a pitch will come and they're looking for a certain style, like a retro style or they kind of, the creators already have in mind what they want the show to look like, but sometimes they'll just be like, throw everything at it and we'll narrow it down from there. So that can be a lot of fun just when you're just throwing everything at the wall and trying to maybe pick a style that interests the creators or the people in charge people in charge um that uh because that's not me at this point but i i can take direction well and uh, a character designer needs to honestly be able to draw in any style that they ask you don't Mm. i mean a lot of people think oh well you just inject your own style into everything but that's really not how it is at all um unless you're like the creative force behind the show or what the pitch so um that's but something in, that a lot yeah. of new illustrators and artists don't really understand. Yeah, they, it, it's it's actually yeah. a very rare thing for an artist to never have to change styles exactly. during their career. It's yeah. yeah it's, so so how much uh, like on a on a typical pitch, how much autonomy are you given to like to I mean I, I know you said sometimes they come with with mm-hmm. more fleshed out ideas. But say it's not, I mean, do you just go nuts and just come up with whatever you want and see what sticks or is it a more collaborative, how does that, how does that play out? Well, we are just working on a pitch right now and, um, it, they did want us to like kind of do it in a retro style, but they also wanted to see like how far we could push it. And, um, so Mm. it, it, it was a lot of fun. Like I do get to go my own way. I mean, sometimes they'll be like, well, we wanted to like the eyes to look like an Archie character, you know, like we, we have Mm -hmm. like an idea already in mind, but, but they don't want it to be exactly like that. So, you know, they They do let you, they still want a personal stamp on it of some kind. And then sometimes they don't even honestly, like people who are not art, (laughs) who are not artistic, but creative, like the showrunners or whatever, they, they don't know what they want. So sometimes you kind of just have to like, um, push it in that direction so but i usually get to i sometimes i get to go pretty far but sometimes it's very like on point like Mm -hmm. we need realistic anatomy we need you know 
and a lot of it, I think a lot of the style is dictated by like budget constraints and stuff like that because we, what we do at Floyd, we do like rigging, like mm-hmm. a puppet kind it's of. commonly known as limited an- animation. Yes, limited mm-hmm. animation. So, I mean, we can't do like some types of animation on a, on a, on the kind of like budget and scale we're working on. I'm, so in, I think. In, in what ways, like do you use in, in order to address that? Are you typically doing like simpler clothing, simpler hairstyles, things uh, like that? Is that what addresses that issue? Well, t- kind of. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're a person and you look at Archer, you're probably going to think, Oh, that looks really complicated because it's kind of realistic, but it's, it's all on joints and the, the um, the clothing is, you just have to know how the, the, uh, I mean, I, I have to keep this in mind too, like how the anatomy is actually going to move in the animation. Mm-hmm. So like how the joints are going to move and things like that. So you can get complicated like design wise, but you, your animation can't be like too f- complicated. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know if that makes sense the way mm-hmm. I'm explaining it. But, um, like if you look at something like, um, uh, that Fantasia 2000 short um, uh, Rhapsody in Blue where it like looks like Al Hirschfeld drawings and they're all like moving rapidly and smoothly and stuff like that. We're more moving on like a rig so you can't be too um, flowy. Flowy, I right. guess is what yeah. I'm saying. Are you, you you can, but you've got to, there's ways to like right. work around it. You're not it. doing frame for frame animation no. yeah. where each and every um, joint and or part of the body can mm-hmm. be moved in, in in a completely individual way, mm-hmm. um, which in a way uh, that's much more complicated than limited animation. Mm-hmm. But limited animation, I know, comes with quite a bit of its own complications oh, yeah. as well. I mean, yeah. and sometimes they want us to they want us to like sometimes not think about that so they can see like what we would come up with and then maybe they can work around it because you don't uh-huh. want to be limited. But I mean, you do kind of keep it in the back of your mind, like how it's going to have to move and everything like that. So, right. Very mm-hmm. cool. So how long have you been working for Floyd County? Um, I started working mid 2015, 2015. Uh-huh. So about two and a half years, about two and a half give years. or take. Now I, wonderful I, years. <laughs> we, we definitely want to backtrack to prior to that, but again, that's a little bit later in the podcast. Tell us about some of the freelance work that you do as well as working at Floyd County. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Um, one of the very first things I did was I uh, found an agent. Oh, really? Um, an uh, I didn't an know illustration that. agent. We'll get into oh, okay. why that's uh, good and why it's not good. Okay. Um, but I did um, one of the f- first freelance things I did was for a company called um, NB Illustrations, and that that's in London because my agency's in London. Oh, wow. So that that's also kind of it has its ups and downs. But um, so like I would do freelance for like um, uh like educational books, like um, mm-hmm. math books and stuff, like little illustrations. So that it, <laughs> it seems it seems like it went very quickly from doing something for Joe Schmuckatelli and and moving very <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and moving very quickly to doing stuff for national and international yeah, that, that's, clients. That's quite okay, a leap. well, yeah. all right, the, the, okay. Basically, I went on to Google in two thousand and eight, and I found um, all the agencies, and I applied to probably. Wow. 200. You really I mean, put yourself out there. Oh, yes. I definitely like sent, you know, I really was trying to find a children's book agent in America. Okay. So when you said agencies, you literally mean like an agent, like, like, I didn't even know there were 200 oh, yeah. illustration oh, yeah. agents on the planet. I, mean, I don't know. It's been 2008 since I looked. So. Right. But, <laughs> yeah. I know that that's changed a lot of I mean, the years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you wanted someone to represent you. You hey. needed a rep. Yeah. Now, there's good things and bad things about that. I think, honestly, I was probably a little young and my style wasn't as developed as it is now. And actually, my style is completely different than oh, it okay. was in 2008. So um, so it was much more like realistic and um, illustrative. And now it's much more cartoony and, mm-hmm. you know, character driven. Basically, I found this. I sent all my stuff to agencies and one agency got back to me and um uh, they're called Lemonade. They're located in London. Yeah, <laughs> it's real cute. They they represent probably like uh, I don't know between like seventy five people or something like that. Okay. So mm. basically, like they get thirty percent of every right cut. That's pretty common. I mean, but you know they do find me work, but it was very like 
like one job a year, two jobs a year. It okay. was very so you because, you weren't top of their no, list. No, 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 no. I was probably like in the basement. Mm. Um, <laughs> right. So so I would be doing projects for Joe Schmuckinelli, and uh, <laughs> I would like every once in a blue moon I would get like a you know a freelance like project like that like Burberry for something real was um uh yeah Burberry's um their clothing company mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. I got a job doing stuff for them i got a job doing stuff for like um you know like uh instructional books and i've actually to this day i never even seen those books i'm assuming they exist somewhere oh that's interesting yeah like i wish they would mail me one yeah (laughs) i I I, I think normally you're you're supposed to get either tear sheets or a comp book from most of those types of jobs (laughs) never saw it I mean, mm-hmm. but I didn't know what to ask either because mm-hmm. I was a dumb kid. Well, but, maybe, um, maybe that's a premature or, or, or an early piece of advice for anybody listening. Oh, yeah. Always always ask for it in the contract for tear sheets or comp, actual exactly. comp uh, 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 issues or, or publications. Exactly. And like one of the things that I found out early on was my agency would, um, they'd ask me for like, well, we're going to be in this illustration manual. You can buy an ad in here for, you know, right. 300 oh, pounds, yeah. which, I mean, it t- me is like $600 at the time or, you know, pounds or whatever. You have to like, no, it's euro, whatever. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Whatever <laughs> the point is, is it, it was London. more money than you wanted to spend. <laughs> yeah, because right. I'm broke as a joke. So uh, <laughs> um, it was definitely um, a learning process. But like I would, you know, buy pages and illustration manuals and things like that um, I'm and and um but i mean they would be very spotty and things like that and so that's I, I i there's so many questions that i want to ask at this point but one of them has always been when i when i meet somebody who actually puts themselves in illustration manuals or manuals annuals, annuals yeah <laughs> um because i've never done that and i've been approached by several of those annuals oh. over the years asking me if, if i wanted to spend two thousand five hundred dollars to get a two and a half page spread or something like that i would love to sometimes sure that would be great <laughs> but my question has always been whether or not that ended up bearing fruit for you. Yeah, honestly, to me, it didn't really. Um, uh, they call it ROI in the business world, return on investment. Uh, I can see. I, I think today it's so different now with um, social media and the internet. I mean, mm-hmm. not saying like. I mean, I love picking up annuals and things like that, but it's just it's it's not it probably doesn't have the same impact i would imagine that it would in like you know the early 2000s or the late 90s or anything when like that when that was the only yeah, game I in mean, town you, just yeah, like yeah. you you don't i mean not knocking it but you don't need to do that you you'll right. be okay so uh, and that that's the yeah. normal answer that i get and you and i were actually talking about tom richmond earlier and mm-hmm. i actually asked him several years ago whether or not he felt like that was a fruitful thing and i think he even actually put a a blog post out about it and he essentially said he's not getting the return on mm-hmm. investment that he should get for the kind of money that yeah. they're asking especially in today's time frame you know with with social media and websites and and so many other ways that you can market yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's interesting. So uh, annuals not paying the bills for you. Not, not, so you don't do so them much. anymore. No, I mean I have. Um, it's funny because there's a there's a magazine called Imagine FX, and I mm-hmm. which love I it. love. Yeah, love and it. I yeah. just some, and like a, a bunch of my friends have gotten in it, and I'm like, hey, hey. Oh, I want to be in there. And, and so, so did I they, did submit my did you, stuff, and I have not heard. I just did so, it like okay. a week or two ago, so that okay, might not even yeah. be relevant. But uh, hopefully, like, so I'm still kind of doing it, but that didn't cost me anything. And so what you <laughs> what you approached them for was to do like a how to article or something yeah, like that, right? Basically, yeah. yeah. And Very I sent cool. them examples of my work, but again, that didn't cost me anything. So if I do get back from right. you know hear, hear anything from that, I'll be happy, and you know I don't think it'll. I don't know. I guess you just have to weigh like what what time investment, what people do this reach that would reach. I do some science fiction like um, art in my fun free time. Mm -hmm. So but I'm not really known for that. So I was thinking maybe I could Mm -hmm. reach like new people that um, Mm. new people that didn't. um, I wouldn't reach normally. Marketing is and marketing yourself as an artist is something I want to get into just Mm -hmm, a little bit mm -hmm. more. But before we go too deep on that, I want to bring up. Uh, what I, I kind of alluded to earlier, which is that you are working on Trolls for DreamWorks, yeah. which is, is that a considered a mini graphic novel or a comic book or what, what is that? It is a little mini graphic novel. Mm-hmm. It's uh, only, th- only three volumes are out so far. Uh, well, they're about to put the third volume out, but um, I've done up to five volumes. So they're like 
I'm working on like the fifth one. Um, they're just uh, short comics. The age range for the comics are like, uh, I forget, it's like five to ten year olds or something mm-hmm. like that. So they're not like in depth. They're just little like one or two page comics, but they're all collected together in this graphic novel. So um, and they're put out by a company called Paper Cuts. Paper Cuts. Mm-hmm. And I've seen them on the shelves um, along with other children's mm-hmm. books and stuff like that before. And at first, when I first saw this, uh, I, I met you at the Degenerate Artist Market yeah. here in Atlanta, Georgia, that was put on by the Lotus Eaters Club, mm-hmm. uh, which mm-hmm. we hope to maybe have some members of the Lotus Eaters Club. If anybody wants to know who the heck they are, just go on into to Instagram and actually type in Lotus Eaters Club. Mm-hmm. But, um, but anyway, they put that on, and it was kind of like a mini art convention, which was really, yeah, really was cool here, here in Atlanta. And so when I approached your booth, you had a table set up and it was more like a booth. You actually had like a whole, <laughs> like a whole setup. It was very cool. Uh-huh. And, um, and the trolls thing just kind of grabbed my attention. The style yeah. of it was very nice. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a really nicely finished small, like a mini, mm-hmm. like a mini book. Like, and it felt at first, like it, I thought it was a children's book, but then, you know, it's, it's a panel for panel storytelling medium is what it is. So it's a comic. <laughs> Um, Which is funny because I have no. You've history. never done that. I've before. never done a comic in my life. I've read them. So. Uh, well, <laughs> you've got the chops because uh, I, I, yeah. I I've got a sequ- I've, I've got two sequential art degrees, <laughs> and I can tell you that I wouldn't have known that you had no experience oh, with it by looking at it. Thank I mean, you. you must have a great editor who's giving you some good yeah, advice I as do, well. So. I do have um, some great people at Paper Cuts that um, and there's there's this guy at DreamWorks that like looks at it and. I'm, his name's on all the paper, but I've never actually talked to You've him. You've never spoken to I've him. I've never spoke to him, but he he's very helpful. <laughs> I'm sure that he's influencing the, the outcomes oh, nonetheless. Yeah, yeah. So did you have to develop, uh, was your style, was your natural style, pro, or the, the style that you use for most of your personal work, mm-hmm. is it that much different from what you use for trolls, or did you have to develop a new style for trolls as well? How did that work out? I'd say my style is really similar. It might be a little more simplified. When I, they they were attracted to my style, they liked how like um, graphic and bright, and I use a lot of, I guess, graphic style, which kind of fits with the troll world. Mm-hmm. But um, I... Bold, simplified yeah, bold, shapes. Simpl- yeah, shapes, driven, mm-hmm. color, you know, bright mm-hmm. colors. Um, And Trolls is like an acid trip, if you've seen that movie. An acid trip? Uh, I mean, it's really like <laughs> bright and colorful. Yeah. But um, I was I was simplifying a little too much and getting off model, so they want I did have to develop it and like it's, they wanted it on model. So mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. each one has different ears and like I have to like make them look like so it, my style is very similar to what it in the end result is, but I am like consciously I would probably make it a little more like cartoony if it was like if it was, was just, just up to you if yeah. like nobody was talking about it it would and be that real, that goes back to the conversation yeah. we had earlier where you you still you always have to be able to emulate mm-hmm. a particular style exactly. Uh, even if it's just a slight change. But yeah. I, I would say that what I see in those books is very similar mm-hmm. to what I saw on your website and what I saw on the prints that you had for Good. sale. At, at uh, I mean, it, it's recognizably you. Well, see, that's something I really struggle with because I'm, this is going to not braggadocious but i'm like I, i'm kind of good at a lot of different things so i kind of like i'm real worried sometimes about like when i look at my website or whatever that it it looks like 10 different people drew everything so i'm i, I disagree people, with that yeah people do like of course me in my head i'm on my worst credit but people right. like even my husband's like no it's it's got a style it I mean, says it says you yeah it, it definitely does and good. even the Thank way you. even the, it, the colors that you use <laughs> the way that you use textured brushes obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. which i really Really like that. I like the um, it, it. It adds a richness to it that wouldn't be there if you were simply using more flat or maybe just a simple gradient or something like mm-hmm, that, which mm-hmm. has its place. I, I love artists who use mm-hmm. that, but I tend to love. I tend to love flat color on more rough style pencils mm-hmm. and inks, and you're you're kind of doing a little bit of a mixture of the two. Yeah, I'm just making it up. <laughs> yeah, but it, it no, is it's, it is equaling a a distinct voice is what I'm getting good. at. So yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm kind of curious to talk about the um, with the trolls that you know being on model and having mm-hmm, these different mm-hmm. things. How does that get communicated to you? Do you get like a you know a design bible or are there examples? I, I, it's or? funny because like when I first got the gig, this was way before the movie came out. Oh. So like I didn't know I got this thing with all the characters on it, like this PDF, but I didn't know anybody's name. I didn't know um 
like their relationships to each other and stuff like that. So I just basically got like a character sheet with all their looks and stuff like that. And then yeah. did you have to go back and, and watch the movie and, and do some more oh, research? Well, since or? like the movie came out, I mean, I've drawn, I've drawn a lot before the movie came out ah. and stuff. And then the movie came out and I was like, oh, this would have helped a lot if I had. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, it doesn't matter. Right. But uh, yeah, it's funny, especially with like doing so the you backgrounds. Were, you were not stuff. in the privileged position of being able to see any no, of that in advance. They, they actually, probably in like July, and the movie didn't come out till November, they were like, we're doing an early screening here in New York. Do you want to come up? And I'm like, uh, no, I'm. I don't have that kind of money. I just can't like. You know, and I work full oh, they, time. They didn't. They didn't offer to fly you out there. No, I'm oh. not that famous. <laughs> that, not that famous yet. Maybe someday. Yet. <laughs> no, they, but they like offered to let me come, and I was like, "That's so sweet." No, I cannot do that. So would you would you say that that this project is one of the biggest freelance opportunities yes. that you've had so up until this far, point? So far, I, well, I, as I was doing this, I did get um. Do you know Hasbro? They're like a toy company. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I mean, I don't, I'm not good at this. Um, but Hasbro, do you know Littlest Pet Shops? They're like they're like little uh, little pet shop creatures. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> huh. And uh, so I've done a lot of, not a lot, but I've done a few designs for them and uh, Disney Princess uh, line. But that was just concept art. So okay. I, I don't know if anything will ever come of that. So but, these are some pretty big clients. Yeah. And you know what? I think. Did, did we actually ask you how you got the Trolls job? This is really important to a lot of people, but and, and then this will lead us back into the marketing discussion. It's just a dumb story. I pay money for a website that no one goes to. <laughs> I, went, I went to your website. Well, thank you. No. More people will after they no, listen to this they podcast. Do. They do. And, um, but, uh, you know, Instagram and things like that, it's all very useful. But anyway... A late, like, if you send me a friend request on Facebook, I will accept it. I don't even like look at you, could be a serial killer. I don't know. <laughs> so, like, so, this lady, um, you know, I don't know how she found me. She was, she was like, I love your art. Can I commission you to do a, um, draw a picture? And I drew her, uh, Josie and the Pussycats picture for her. And I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, that was fun. Well, she ended up telling, and this was on Facebook, Facebook, okay, Facebook, which I never get on. She um ended up liking my art, and she lives in New York, and she's friends with one of the editors of Paper, Paper Cuts. Awesome. And she told him about me, and uh, they approached me. Um, he did, and they they have an artist that has worked for them before. Um, Stephanie Bush, I don't know how to say her last name. Bushkima, Bushkima, Bushima. Bushima. I think it's Basima. Oh, do you know who I'm talking about? No, no. Okay. But I've heard the name before because okay. there's there's a there's a comic book artist called uh, John Basima, and I think it's Basima, not Bus, yeah. not Buskima. Yeah, that's how I, I used to. I think you're right. Okay. Yeah. Well, she's done, and they were like, "Oh, your style's kind of similar," which it is. I mean, I mean, hers is different. Hers is painted, and I, I like her style mm -hmm. too. But they were like, "Oh, um, she's done work for us too," um, but she's busy doing something. Um, you know, would you be interested in trolls? And I'd never heard of it, obviously, because it's February and the movie hasn't come out or anything and you weren't and, around, and, like, and you're too young to have been around when it was a well, popular thing I right mean, i remember from like that i was born in 85 so i kind of remember them from like being a kid but they right. weren't like they've been around since like the 50s or something oh apparently. really yeah they're like i, I well, actually in did like not the know netherlands that. and stuff they're like from well they the, were very popular in it, it, during the 80s mm -hmm. and part of the yeah. 90s when I was um, I a preteen and teenager. Them. Yeah. And and they were mostly popular among young girls. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't <laughs> like the kind of the thing. Jewels yeah. in the stomach, but they don't right. they were ugly ugly kind of like these don't look like if you've seen the new dreamworks movie they don't look it's anything. a very different thing yeah yes. they look uh, they're completely cute. different I, I had the little pencil topper did you oh, yeah. like with the fuzz and stuff yeah yeah it's uh -huh. just a little tiny you know <laughs> like stuck um but uh that's funny because um i was like yeah sh i mean you said dreamworks you had me at dreamworks i don't care what it is so it did <laughs> whatever uh, after <laughs> after uh, what was the name of the lady that you did the uh the thing for she, she reached out to you on facebook yeah her name's marcy so right. after marcy got a hold of the you said uh, one of the editors one of the head editors yeah, she, over i guess at, she's friends with him or okay. something i didn't really like Asked too many and then questions. this person <laughs> just reached out to you via yeah. email, or, yeah, email uh -huh. and say, hey, Marcy sent me. How did that work? Yeah, she was like, hey, I'm friends with Marcy, blah, blah, blah. And I mm -hmm. saw your work on Facebook. And I was like, what? <laughs> right. <laughs> just because I'm super bad about, well, especially in 2000, last year, I'm mm -hmm. getting better. I've like trained myself. 
I was very bad at Facebook. Well, after something like this happens, yeah, then suddenly like, hey, Facebook might be, media, yeah, thing. social media might be a little bit more important <laughs> hey, than I thought. Yeah. There might be a future in that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, it's only uh, people have been getting on, telling me to get on Facebook and stuff since like 2004. Oh, mm-hmm. you know, so it only took me. You but know, the bottom line is, is you, you had <laughs> actually been putting yourself out there yeah. already. It's not like you had nothing no, on I your Facebook page. And like, even I was doing. Um, for my living, like my pay the bill money, I was work doing um like I worked at a cell phone company and okay like so I, wait 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 mm-hmm. so so you started with the trolls thing before you started at Floyd County, oh yeah yeah I yeah. did not know yeah. that okay mm-hmm. so uh, how well, long yeah. how long have you been on the trolls stuff oh um, yeah I have such a bad sense of time yeah I guess it was 2015 okay um yeah. Because the movie came out in 2006. But you you stall you also started at Floyd County in 2015. Yeah, 2015. So it, it was, was just, a very crazy year. <laughs> it, yeah, it sounds like it was a big year. Uh-huh, it yeah. was a big year. Uh-huh. And and so, in in essence, the 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 takeaway here is social media, putting yourself out there mm-hmm. on social media, having a unique voice, meaning yes. stylistically speaking. Yes. These were the things that added up to being found, being discovered essentially mm-hmm, exactly. by uh, the the editor of. I keep forget. I keep thinking uh, paper. paper cuts. I keep thinking paper works because it's for DreamWorks, oh, but it's, yeah. it's paper, paper cuts, cuts for the, DreamWorks. Yeah. yeah, like they they uh, they do a lot of stuff for Nickelodeon too. Like paper cuts, like has I guess in um not American. What is it? Nancy Drew. They do like all the Nancy Drew mm-hmm. stuff. So they have like properties and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So um, uh, yeah, that's awesome. That's that. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And you're, you're like so many of our guests, you're being so humble about <laughs> this experience. But the bottom line is, is being discovered in this way is it's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Like, well, from that, I think uh, I got another job. It's funny because, OK, the editor that was my first editor on on uh, Trolls, she ended up going to another company. I'm not sure why, but uh, they're going to do a book for Rand McNally, who's Am I saying that right? Random? Yeah. 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 They're like a, um, I mean, I've, I just had books from them when I was a kid and stuff, mm-hmm. but they're going to be doing a um, book and she was like, Hey, you want to work on this? And I was like, so, you know, like meeting one person like has led, to, and that hadn't started yet, that mm-hmm. project, but um, that's like led to So other one, one thing leads yeah, to another. Like and, and obviously you're, you're proving <laughs> uh, for these people to be easy to work with. Yeah. I'm, I do think I'm, I'm not, huh, I'm, I'm, sca- I'm super scatterbrained. I'm like just flaky, but I'm super fast and I deliver always on time. So I think that does like prove right. to them like, oh yeah, you're reliable. Awesome. So. Well, I'm That's, sure yeah. for most of them, as long as you get it done on time, oh, yeah. they don't care how you get it done. Yeah. Then, oh, they don't, uh, hmm, the, I've told them several times, the troll people, I'm like, yeah, I do have a full-time job. They don't, they don't care. <laughs> I, right. I mean, and they shouldn't care because they're hiring right. you to do, you know, they have their deadlines. And I, I shouldn't even like tell them that because they're like, you know, they're hiring you to do something. They don't care what you, you need to have it to right. them all the time. They don't I, care. And I, I think <laughs> as long as you're capable of handling it, mm-hmm. then then taking the work. Well, there was is, one is time I stayed you know. up for 95 hours. So, you know. Wow. Well, that, I slept for like that's micro too many naps. Hours. Yeah. That's, that's too much. Yeah, I think yeah. I was like, I, 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 that was a long time ago. I don't, I I, 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 let me put a disclaimer. <laughs> don't, I don't do that. I don't think that this podcast will ever support the idea of never sleeping in order to get work My done. My husband definitely yeah. didn't support that because I was crazy <laughs> by the end of it. That is bananas. I think the longest I've ever stayed up trying to meet deadlines is maybe 36 straight hours or something like that. That. I uh, napped and in that's between. Too, and that's too. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, like, I, I'll oh, take like oh. a two or three hour nap. So you're stuff. lying. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're Basically, lying to I'm, me. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> exaggerating for a comedic, comedic effect. Well, but you you had a marathon for 95 <laughs> yeah. hours, is what you're saying. Yeah, but basically. I mean, I remember the worst for me ever was in grad school, and then also when I was teaching and also doing a freelance at the same time. Mm. And there were times when I was getting two hours of sleep per per night for as many as four days in mm, a row. Yeah. And, and that was too much. Yeah. And and something not only had to break, it did break. Yeah. Which I've discussed right here on this podcast before. <laughs> but it's I don't I don't subscribe to that no. anymore. I only take on as much work as I know I can get done and still at least have six hours of sleep per well, night. Well yeah, we we've all like I had to talk to them about the, it, it it was a weird situation. Like it wasn't a normal situation because mm-hmm. I had to like go out of town for mm-hmm. something. So and but I, it's fine. I, I think mean, as long as you're up front with, yeah, with they, your they were fine. With yeah, with I think as you're as long as you're up front from the beginning that 
if, hey, you've got this really tight deadline. Okay, I can't make that deadline. How it w- would would this deadline work? Well, see, it honestly you know? was probably my fault because I was, yeah, if I had told them up front that I needed more time, I believe that they would have definitely, I mean, I've there now we're to the point where we're like buddies. But, uh, <laughs> but if I told them up front, you know, I needed more time, they would have been fine with it. But it was like right when I was starting out. So I was like trying to be the super professional, like, yeah, I don't need any breaks, but uh, uh, I, mean, yeah. I, guess, um, I definitely think you should yeah. like and, know and, your limits. And ultimately, yes, I was just about mm-hmm. to say the same thing that that it's more important for you to know your limits and know what you can actually fit into a given week, day, mm-hmm. night, whatever, and and be upfront with your clients about that. I've yeah. made I'm I'm talking from really bad experience where I was the bad guy myself, and and I promised. I I, mm-hmm. I I overpromise and underdelivered, which is never what you want to yeah, do. Exactly. You you yeah. have to go the other way around. Yeah. You have to underpromise and overdeliver. And in some cases that does mean padding a little bit. If mm-hmm. you think for sure you can get it done in a week, say you can get it done in a week and two days. You, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's very good advice. I yeah. would agree yeah. with that. Yeah, I think we've all been there. Yes. Actually, uh my, my first experience with freelancing uh was when I was drafting, not even doing art. Uh I thought I could get one more project done the same week I was moving. Oh, no, no. From Maine to Georgia. Oh, no, no, no. And uh, <laughs> needless to say, I didn't get it done. No. And I got a very angry phone call, justifiably. Yeah. And um, I, t- to their credit, they, they paid me for the, for the uh-huh. time that I had spent on it so far, although I did give them a 50% discount because of oh, all, the, wow. all the extra problems it yeah. caused for them by not getting it done on time. Right. Well, see, yeah, then that just creates so I, a lot I, of drama. <laughs> right. You know? Since then, it's like yeah. most of us, I think, have that experience where you, you screwed up badly at least once. Yeah. And you're like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to overpromise anymore because, yeah. oh, it's, it's, it's awful. Yeah. And I hate confrontations. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and, you know. and the best way to avoid that is, yeah. is, is just the formula we just, mm-hmm. we just mentioned, yeah. which so, is that, that under promise and over deliver, you know, whenever possible. Yeah. So, so, so the full version of what I was saying before is they don't care how you get it done, but just make sure you promise what you actually can get done. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that's, that's the caveat there. Mm-hmm. Right. So this is the point in the podcast when we like to kind of dig into what got you started with doing art in the first mm-hmm. place, or like some people uh, like to say, what got you started arting? <laughs> so, I mean, did you, did you draw a lot as a kid? Um, when I was a little, little kid, I was going to be a veterinarian when I grew up. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then, then, I, then, oh, I can actually tell you why I got into art and it's real crazy. Um, my, I'm from a town of about 200 people. Oh, by the way, where are you from? Yes, I'm from Holly Bluff, Mississippi. Shout out to no one listening to a podcast in Hollywood, Mississippi. Okay. Because uh, we barely got the internet out there. Oh, wow. Um, uh, so yeah. you, were, you were from a really small really town. Really small town, like 200 people probably. Um, wow. I mean, the, uh, no no stoplights or stop sign. I mean, dirt, gravel roads. You know, the new, <laughs> Not even a one-stop light No, now. The, the, our school was 30 miles away. So I Are mean, you kidding me? Are you no. being serious? Yes. Wow. <laughs> so school's 30 miles away. Wait, here's the test. Was it uphill both ways? No, it was not uphill <laughs> both ways. You had to go over a bridge and stuff like that. And All one right, time there was out. a big traffic, uh, a tractor, it hit a truck. And one day I couldn't go to school because there was only one road. <laughs> oh my God. Because a tractor, not a tractor trailer. No, a, a, tractor. a tractor. Yeah, I'm from truck. like the Mississippi Delta. So it's uh, soybean and cottons. That's all I know. <laughs> um, That's great. Anyway, so. uh, one time my mom went out of town to a teacher's conference. She's a teacher. So she left me at my grandmother's and there was a copy of Beauty and the Beast and I went insane and watched it like 10 times in a row and that's when I decided I wanted to do what these people did and so so, yeah. so that was your first like real exposure like, to yes. art that you just loved as a, just, as a child yeah, what, what age were you do you think 12 12 okay mm-hmm. wow that's that's actually not that young no no I mean I, I kind of like doodled some and stuff before that nobody in my fa- my sister actually she liked to do watercolors and things like that but I mean I, neither of my parents draw none of my grandparents or anything like so I and none of my like schoolmates I mean, I, I had like 30 people, the same 30 people from kindergarten to 12th grade. So, I mean, you know, I was the artsy kid. So my sister did some watercolors and things like that. But then I started getting to art. And then when I was 14, um, my school didn't have an art program or anything. So my parents found um, an art teacher in Jackson, Mississippi, which is the capital. Wow. Uh, so how far was that? About 65 miles. 
Okay, and and how often were you going to this? Well, I got my. It's called a hardship when you're 14. It's a driver's license for 14 year olds. Wow. I don't know if they do that now. I don't think they do that nowadays. But that's for people who live out in the country. Wait, so you were able to get a driver's license, not a learner's <laughs> permit, no at the age license. of 14, so that you could go to? Well, I, I'd have to take my uh, my cousin to school and stuff. Cause, Cause, nobody's going to school. I mean, right. you know, like I'd have to give people rides and okay. stuff like that. So that's why I got oh. a hardship. Right. But every Wednesday, I would miss school and I would go drive to Jackson and um, would take drawing classes from nine o'clock in the morning to nine o'clock at night and drive back home. Wow. Yeah, I don't know how that actually doesn't make sense. Like, um, like how they let you pull that off? I don't know off? how they let me. I went to private school. They just let me do what I wanted. So, <laughs> so your your parents and obviously the other adults me, at, yeah. at school were very supportive yes. to you. Were they you, didn't know what to do with me, uh-huh. but they supported <laughs> me. They were like, well, she likes art. We don't know anything about this art thing, but go figure it out. So well, that, see that, and that's, yeah. that's not necessarily the normal story that you hear, especially from people who are from really yeah. remote areas like that. I think it's a little bit, yeah, no, I mean, my sister was very interested in art and they kind of... They kind of discourage her a little bit. I mm-hmm. mean, from like pursuing art when she got a little bit older, just because, you know, it wasn't like something you can make for a living. And I think they saw that like that. I mean, she's perfectly happy now. She's fine. But I think they saw like maybe we shouldn't have discouraged her and stuff. So they really encouraged me. So for years, I felt kind of guilty, like, oh, I'm getting to do kind of what my sister didn't get to do. Wanted to do, yeah. Yeah, but she, if you ask her, she's like, I don't care. You know, she she doesn't she doesn't think I'm just internalizing things. But uh, so that uh, so I would uh, go to that class, and it was um, figure drawing, and it was um, Bob Penny Baker, and uh, yeah. So I took that class for until I graduated high school, and then he went to um, he became the chair of the art department at Belhaven University, and he was like, "Hey, Cat, you want to go to Belhaven?" And I was like, "Sure, do, Bob." And uh, <laughs> so I followed him. <laughs> so I followed him to college. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. So that was uh, my yeah my art. Well, career. I mean that that's that's a, a real nutshell. But I mean, what else influenced you in terms of art when you were a kid? You said uh, you know Disney's Disney. Beauty and the Beast was the start. But what yes. else was there? There had to be more oh, than just yeah, that. Oh yeah, there was. Um, I actually remember I was very. Um, you know, obsessed with Beauty and the Beast. So I wanted to go to see Beauty and the Beast on Broadway and uh, in New York. And um, so when I was like in the 10th grade, how no, 11th grade. Um, so I guess like 15, 16, uh, I went to go see Beauty and the Beast on Broadway. Well, there's the Society of Illustrators in New York. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I knew that was there. And I like didn't even like think about, oh, I'm going to go into illustration or anything. But so I went to visit. Well, if you go, you know, and like looked around. Well, if you go upstairs, there's a J.C. Landecker painting of like. Yep. Um, I've seen it. Uh, yeah. Um, like and I. Like, I had that moment in uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off where he's standing in front of, like, that, I don't know, the Grand Jeté picture or whatever, where you're, like, zooming in on my face or something like that. It was, like, one of those moments, like, oh, my God, that's mm-hmm. the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. What What is this, and how right. can I do this? So right. that was my, like, moment. I'm, I'm not familiar with it. What, what kind of a – what is it a uh, It's of? a painting – well, I mean – he did a lot of like commercial art where it was like, um, he's kind of like a little bit before Norman Rockwell, but it's basically the painting that I'm describing is like a lady with like butterfly wings in the background. And the, she's like giving a man's giving her flowers or something. And it was a Saturday evening post, um, cover mm-hmm. hmm. like from the, uh, it was, that one was from probably the fifties, yeah, maybe forties or fifties, yeah. something like Actually, that. That sounds vaguely familiar. And yeah. I have a, I have a print of it in oh, my bathroom that's awesome. because I was like, this and there's is also the... a Norman Rockwell, mm-hmm. I believe over the bar, the bar. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And I, yeah that oh, was brought okay. up in a previous, yeah. Uh, oh, conversation. Really? It was oh, the one I didn't know any of this cause I'm not an illustration, but it was talked to other people. I've only been there like twice, but it was, um, oh my gosh, Jason Lee and Decker. I'll have like every book he's ever, well, not he, but every like, I have all of this. Stuff. All the books I about like, him. And, which is weird because if you look at my style, it doesn't look anything like that. But it's just such a big, like, I just love his artwork. Um, it's like gooey. I don't know how to describe <laughs> it. I just want to eat it. But, uh, uh, it is yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, it's beautiful. So, um, but I decided, like, oh, I really am interested in illustration. But I, I was at a college that just had a BFA in art. Uh, and just degree. art in general. Art in art. And so, it, wasn't, yeah. it wasn't like a BFA no, no, no. in illustration mm-hmm. or in art. painting or, or nope. yeah, just 
Art. I mean, I took oil cl- painting classes. I know how to work a, a table saw and a scroll saw and a skill saw, and I know how to stretch canvas. So and... they gave you a, a, a foundation mm-hmm. in studio art. Was there figure painting and drawing classes? Was there was there still life? Was there color theory classes? That sort of thing. Yeah, it wasn't because um, I was the Bob, the guy that I was talking about earlier. He became the chair of the year that I. Like I came with him, the chair and, of the department. Yeah, so he brought me with him. So we were kind of me. The a, there was only like fifteen art majors that year or something. Um, so we were kind of like the experimental group. Like he like had all new lesson plans and stuff like that. And we like, uh, but there were some structure. But we did we just took classes on everything. So speaking of structure, we're 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 jumping from I think you said your eleventh grade year when you were in New York, uh-huh. and which sounded like a wonderful experience. By oh, the way, I wish wonderful. I wish I from Little Ozark, Alabama, had been able to take a trip like that when I was a kid. But uh-huh. that sounded wonderful. So you jumped from that all the way into you were graduating in college almost. So how, let's talk a, a little bit about in between. You were still taking the Wednesday classes all the way through high school, right? Yeah, all the way, yeah, until I graduated high school. And, and that is amazing. And so did you have multiple uh, like uh, teachers or professors or mm, no, just one? Well, it was just the one, the just one Bob. Bob. Okay. And um, What's his last name again? Penny Baker. Penny Baker, He's very okay. good. Uh, do, if you know what um, plain air painting, like um, yeah, if yeah. you know like... Uh, the uh henry henshi it's like a school it's there's a rhode island like um school of plein air painters and he's from like that school okay. like sammy Britt is a famous like painter he lives in mississippi okay um they're so all so this like, is a very competent artist yeah, he, that you were learning from man, from a very young from a very young age <laughs> and see i i did um before he went to Bellhaven, i had a pretty good portfolio honestly of figure drawings and i i shopped them around like i went to the memphis college of art design i went to ringling college of art design to like their really? um yeah to their like um uh portfolio days but i didn't get a big enough scholarship at wrangling and it was expensive. oh i i know how expensive it, <laughs> it is was, yeah. i mean like i got a scholarship but it wasn't like i got a full ride to Bellhaven because i right. went with bob so i didn't and have so, to uh, tell me again what the full name of Bellhaven is Bellhaven university but at the time it was Bellhaven college they have and changed that is it. where in Jackson, Mississippi. Jackson, Mississippi. So yeah. you were then going to go to college in the same place where you'd been traveling every Wednesday yeah. for years yeah. at this point. Yeah. For what was it? I would say I four uh, years four, yeah. from age some, 14 some like through that. the end of mm-hmm. uh, high school. So for yeah. four years, you're yeah. getting what sounds like a heck of an education for a kid. I mean, honestly, yeah. I, like figure drawing. I mean, I, I was, yeah. You know, and so you you were good. in there with other kids, I assume, no. in this class? <laughs> I mean, it was mostly, I mean, there was Rupa, my husband. I met him there. He was 16. And then there was a few other, like, maybe like 18-year-olds and stuff. How um, many people total were going to these classes Well, I took three classes a, a day every Wednesday. Right. So it would be... Um, like 10 people in a class and mostly okay. it was like older people. So lots so. of personal attention mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, from the instructor. And then he became the chair of the art department. So I like was his like toady, I guess. I don't know <laughs> what the word, you know, like, so, I mean, like I had it in good at the college because obviously, I mean, he's still there. I mean, like, obviously right. I like knew him very well at that point and mm-hmm. a few of my friends too, like that okay. so you know, went it, with them too. One of the things I'm kind of drilling down to here is a you you had a relatively good support network mm-hmm. even in high school and and I mm-hmm. guess uh, prior to high school even and then you had um, what sounds like a heck of a teacher for a long period of time which is great and then the same instructor was the one who went on to Bellhaven mm-hmm. and so it's not like you were at some small state school that didn't I mean, it was a small state yeah, school, uh, yeah, but it had but a good it, art department oh, yeah. with a good professor who really taught you it was, real skills. I learned, I had a very good foundation. I would say I was a little bit unfocused in what I wanted to do with that foundation, but I did have a very good foundation is great, what I would great. say. That's mm-hmm. fantastic. Okay. So that's interesting. I, I know a lot of people who have gone to state schools and didn't get a very focused foundation. Like they, they didn't, they weren't really taught to draw. They weren't really oh, no, taught. We they were, were taught very much basically taught modern art, mm-hmm. which I love modern art and I I don't want to bash on it. Mm -hmm. But if you want to go into anything commercial, unless you intend to get into the very small community of gallery artists on this planet, 
um, it, you're going to have a hard time making a living. We, we didn't draw out of our heads until senior year. Wow. So, like, everything was from Senior life. year of college. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, like, uh, and then I was like, what, what, what's in my head? Nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, right. I mean, like, you know, everything was from observation and life, which, I mean, you need both. You but, need both. I mean, uh, you my, definitely My need personal both. Yeah. philosophy as an artist and as a teacher has always been you need to learn yeah. both. There's two different things that happen in your mm-hmm. brain when you, when you work from life and then take that and try and work from it's still it's still from memory it's still from observation to mm-hmm, an extent definitely, yeah. but you need to be able to mix that with what's coming out of your imagination exactly. and, I, and push I agree. it yeah i think this was probably a little bit at the time i think they've kind of from what i've seen from the school they've like bounced it better but i think we were probably a little too focused on observational and life drawing and not as focused on other things but um i think that uh i I found the balance, you know, later on on my own. But yeah, I think awesome. Yeah, mm. okay. Sounds, sounds like a fairly classical. It was, art yeah, education. really. Yeah. I mean, it's like, a very I kind of wish I had more of that. Yeah, it was a really small school, so I mean, but I think like we did have a very like classical base of like, you know, you're gonna draw from. Um, you know, figure drawing and light, you know, I, I, I drew my, I have sketchbooks on my hands, like sketchbooks, mm. like 10 of like hand right. drawings. So, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. I, I well, mean, I, I like honestly wish OCD someone, I, I kind of wish someone had pushed me that hard when I was younger because yeah, no, no one really did. Oh, you know? yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I had a couple of great drawing teachers when I was younger, but I mean, they were, they were not as consistent in my personal history. I mm. mean, they were there for a quarter or two yeah, quarters see, or something it, like yeah, that. Yeah, I kind of you know? have a unique, and Rupa, my husband too, kind of, because he was pretty much with me through a lot of this. Um, we weren't dating, of course, but, uh, I mean, not of course, we weren't dating. And, uh, but so he, you, you he, just knew him up until when? I knew him from when I was 14 because he was in those classes too, but we didn't start dating until I was like 19. Oh, okay. So, so. you were in college when you guys started yeah, yeah, yeah. dating. Mm-hmm. And was he going to the yeah, same school? Yeah, he thought he, he was also a Bob Looming. He like, lim- a Bob Looming, yeah, that's funny. He limbed over to <laughs> with me. So, yeah. So from, from Bellhaven, um, did you get work right away? Well, I went straight into grad school, right? Oh, you so, did. So, the, and what year was that? Uh, so I graduated Bellhaven in two thousand seven, and then okay. I went. I went straight into grad school, which was good. And I, I don't know, like if I'm glad I did everything. Of course, I'm at where I'm at, so I can't mm-hmm. hindsight. But um, so was it ever a question as to whether or not you would go to grad school? Yes. Um, I mean, Bob was like, you don't need to go to grad school. You know, you just go off in the woods and paint, (laughs) which I mean, I'm like, okay. All right, let's let's stop right there. Uh, (laughs) I want to know what you mean. I know what you mean by that, but I want to hear what you mean by that. I mean, he was like, I kind of see some things of what he was saying are true, but he was saying like, how can I make this not sound bad? He was basically (laughs) saying like, you know, art will find a way, you know, if if you he wasn't big into like commercial art and like, you know, magazine work and things like that and illustration. So, and he was more into like gallery work, painting right. and things like that. And is that what he, yeah, he is does. that, is that the direction he was trying to push you into was gallery work? I mean, I don't think he would have like beat me over the head with it, but yeah, probably. I mean, he, he does like giant landscape, plain air paintings and things like that. So I think like, that's kind of like where, which I love that oh, stuff, yes, by the way. Yeah. I, I, and, and without that sort of thing, we wouldn't have the wonderful fantasy landscapes that we see in video games and movies oh, yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. I mean, you absolutely need that. And I love it for just it, its its own thing. I don't, mm-hmm. uh, I'm, what I'm saying is it doesn't have to find its way into a fantasy piece in order exactly. for me to appreciate it. I love seeing that stuff in galleries, in museums, that sort of thing. But that is not everybody's bag. No, I, exactly. And like he's coming from it from a different time period and life expectant, you know, life I mean, he's probably in his 70s now, but I mean, mm-hmm. like he's coming in from a different point of view. And I, I do understand what he's saying, but he was like, you know, yeah, you don't. But my parents definitely wanted me to go to grad school. And I kind of wanted to go to grad school, too, just because I wanted I knew I, I was good, but I knew I needed more like focus. So I thought, oh, grad school, which so uh, you, you did not feel prepared yet to go out and work as a professional artist. Honestly, me personally, no, I didn't mm. at that time. Yeah. And, I, and I ask these questions, and I'm, I'm being so pointed about it, because mm-hmm. 
most people who go straight into grad school or, or go to grad school at all, they have very particular reasons for why they wanted yeah, to go. Yeah, and see, I agree. And I think, honestly, I think you should. I don't think you should. I mean, me personally, I didn't, <laughs> but uh, and it, it's ended up working out okay. But I think you should like. Okay, I you was, didn't what you didn't have I didn't a particular have, like, a reason. Particular, I mean, right. I knew I wanted. I knew I wanted to go like an illustration well, or painting, but I ended up going illustration. But I didn't because I didn't have like a plan. I'm like, this is where I'll find a plan for thirty thousand dollars a year. That was or whatever. That was dumb. Right. <laughs> but uh, uh, um, I think you probably need to be a little bit more um, focused before you just um, right. go so straight to grad y- your school. Your advice would have been to your former self: yeah. maybe take a year and and figure some things out before yeah, you go to grad school. I, yeah, honestly, okay. I mean, but I don't think that's probably true. And it. I probably would uh, probably do it the same, but uh, maybe, um, yeah, I think there would have been value. And was there any, was there any part of you that was just ready to get out of Mississippi? Heck yeah. <laughs> 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 have you been there? <laughs> um, I mean, God bless it. I mean, I got my, uh, my whole family still is in the same place. I mean, everybody's still there, but it's like, it's so different. I mean, just being in a, even Atlanta's like a, we're in the south obviously but it's such like a mindset difference of you know a big city versus a little city so mm-hmm. i mean even savannah like where and i ended it, up being. atlanta is very international yeah oh yeah it really definitely. Is. yeah so um so i i bring that up because i think a lot of people who are from smaller towns mm-hmm. who happen to be creative people i don't think that in in my estimation i wouldn't say that you've had necessarily the same experience as everybody else from small towns. You often hear that there wasn't a lot of a support network and there wasn't, for me, I had very little access to Mm -hmm. really creative people when I was younger. And I did have some early training, but not a lot. Mostly I was by myself working from comics or whatever. Oh, that was a lot of it too, like drawing straight from the television and stuff like that. Right. And I think that a lot of people do that and I think that's really valuable Anyway, my point is, is that often you feel like you're in a bubble alone mm-hmm. when you're from a very small town or from a small place and you don't necessarily feel like you have the support. And it sounds like you actually did. I, I, I mean, I think I've definitely been spoiled by my parents. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> more, yeah, power like, to, more power to you. No, you they're, they're, I mean, I, and I've definitely recognized that and I've been very lucky and blessed. But I mean, like, they, you know, they didn't have any idea what to do with an artsy kid, but they helped me, fig- you know, they... Uh, they supported me for That's being awesome. an artsy Well, yeah, kid. but they, they, they tried. Yeah, they, they, they tried. Didn't just say, yeah, oh, no, this is no, a weird, they, this a phase, it'll go away. Yeah, they weren't like, idea. you know, yeah. well, <laughs> I tried to wear black for like a day and they were like, <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, they, they were, uh, they were really supportive and like they, but they knew, they wanted me to have a job. Like they, they, they don't care like what I draw or what I do, but they want me to have like benefits and right. stuff like that. Right. They don't want me to be in a cardboard box on in New Orleans like tap dancing or anything and drawing <laughs> Well you know, and then, you know like, the they, likelihood of that happening is slim to well, none. Yeah, exactly. But, but uh they, they You've got a lot going times. for you at this point. Well, uh, yeah. with, with with all the different things that are coming your way. But okay, so mm-hmm. You you wanted to get out of Mississippi, at least just to taste another place, <laughs> even if it was to Savannah, Georgia. Yeah, also, uh, what most people town. yeah what most people consider to be a small town. I've said this before, thriving but thriving metropolis. To right, me. <laughs> right. I was just going to say the same <laughs> yeah. thing. Coming from Alabama, when when I got out of junior college in mm-hmm. Alabama, Enterprise, Alabama, and I went to SCAD in Savannah. It was like the big town. That was like the big city to me. Well, I think what you just said, I haven't listened to the podcast where you talked about your past, but I think going to junior college is a very good idea. Don't go to SCAD to take math class. Right. Thank you. I mean, like, why? I say say the same thing to everybody. Uh, And you know what? Honestly, this is one of those things. This was, uh, I, I, I... I don't know if I'm sad to say or proud to say that I don't take my father's advice that often, <laughs> but he, he was one of the ones who really pushed me and my mom too to go to junior college mm-hmm, before I mm-hmm. went anywhere else. Because initially I was looking to try and go to an art school and they said, you know what, go see if you're made for college in the first place. Because yeah, I got a yeah. GED and oh, did okay. not finish high school. So anyway, they said, they said, go do that. And now I even though I was really reluctant to take their advice yeah. at the time, I tell everyone the same thing. Oh, definitely. Don't take Englishes, maths Mm-mm. and uh, and basic sciences and human humanities at a an art school. Take it at a junior college for free or super cheap. 
th- and get your crap together. Learn how to be a student and oh, then go to please, an art school. Yes. Yeah. And um, take some art classes while you're in junior college, you know. I was um, I was a, a graduate student, so I'm like 23 or whatever when I start SCAD. And I was in Bernard Hall. It was a suite. And my roommates were sophomores, which, I mean, okay, they were probably like 18 or 19. Mm-hmm. So that's not that big of a time difference. But the mindset difference, Huge. like they play... Dungeons and Dragons till three o'clock in the morning and miss class and they're taking like Spanish or something and I'm like you're paying so much money or your mom and dad you're paying, are yeah. paying so now, much money now uh, one of those classes will cost uh, I think it's three thousand six hundred dollars per quarter I wanted, so you're I mean, paying like two hundred and fifty plus dollars per class that you miss yeah and I mean I barely talked to them because I was like you were busy I mean I was busy you were and a serious they were student like, well, by that yeah, time like, yeah like seriously like we, and I went from a very small private Presbyterian college where boys weren't allowed into the dorms except one day a month and your feet had to be on the floor and the lights had to be on <laughs> and uh, and the doors had to be open to SCAD where it's like all these Anything crazy goes. liberals. Uh-huh. And so it was like a mind altering experience in and of itself. So, um, right. But, uh, yeah. And, and was, people from around the world. Yeah. Which is, which I mean, was, great that's one of the me. things I, mean, I, I loved, loved about it. it. Yeah. yeah. It was so, so fun. So, okay, so you made the decision, uh, eight, uh, and I, I'm kind of backtracking again, mm-hmm. but partly just to get away from Mississippi, partly because you didn't feel like you were quite ready for a professional life as mm-hmm. an artist yet, mm-hmm. and you knew you wanted to be that, but you still didn't know exactly what it was that you wanted to pursue. So yeah. you were looking at, you told me earlier, the painting department <laughs> and the illustration department. Yes. I have to ask this question. Uh-huh. Tell me why it is that you ended up in illustration instead of painting. Well, um... <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, but this no, is no, so no. much fun. I had to ask. I went to the, um, okay, so I'm like, brought my little portfolio up and I'm like trying, and I do oil painting. To where? To, 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 to the painting department. So I'm like, to the painting department yeah, first. Yeah, so I take it to the painting department first and I'm like super nervous and awkward. And so there's the professor there and I can't even remember his name. And he's like looking through my portfolio and there's a Diet Dr. Pepper sitting on his desk and I drink Diet Dr. Pepper like. 10 a day not really but <laughs> so I was like oh that's mine and I drank it he was like that's that's my Dr. Pepper and I set it down and I said well I'm going to the illustration department because I can never come back here again because <laughs> I'm too embarrassed so that's why I ended up so that is how you ended up an illustration major <laughs> because that was awkward and so <laughs> what was your experience so and by the way um, if, if anybody doesn't know about this sort of thing um, especially for probably younger students in high school and stuff Often an art school will let you do walkthroughs mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. tours, and often, especially if you're trying to go into grad school, yes. the professors, before they let you into grad school, they want to meet you oh, yeah, face definitely. to face. And I mean, you know? I wanted to get a scholarship, right, too. Or, right. Well, it's called a, when you're a graduate student, it's called a... Um, fellowship. Fellowship. That's what right, it was. Right. And I did get a big and, one. And again, <laughs> so that's the, why I ended the up professors, SCAD. it's almost like applying for a job. The oh, professors yeah, yeah. want to know if, if they're going to have you in as a grad student, they want to know whether or not mm-hmm. they can gel with you to work with you. Well, and I mean, you're the graduate students and it's probably the same with undergraduates. I mean, you're like going to represent the college. I mean, they want like professional people who are right. going to like do well in their fields. So they can right. be like, Hey, you went to SCAD or yeah. wherever. So they want you to be the right stuff so yeah they do. i mean you know what i'm saying they want to like you know make sure i'm that, seeing a lot of yeah a like lot of artists slow, i'm seeing like slow walking slow with pink hair and, yeah. and green hair and <laughs> yeah. and and carrying you know, portfolios yeah. on their sides yeah exactly um yeah but uh they so yeah they it is kind of like a job interview so yeah mm-hmm. yeah absolutely and so uh, what was your experience like when you went into the illustration department though uh barring i'm assuming you didn't pick up anybody's dr pepper no there. i didn't i was actually <laughs> not um not didn't make any major mistakes, but uh, it was Alan Drummond was the head. I'm not I'm not sure who the head is mm-hmm. now, um, but he was really great, um, and he loved my. I mean, it was all like life drawings mostly. I had very little like. Um, that was probably a little bit different because anime was very popular when I was um, an undergrad and graduate. And I think a lot of people had like manga and anime in their portfolios. Not that anything's wrong with that, but oh, they yes. do want to say, huh. 
Oh, I was just agreeing with oh, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I think, like, maybe it was a breath of fresh air. That, like, you have, like, really... And I love anime and manga. I was don't about to say, there's a lot of influence yeah. of that in your work. Oh, yeah, so, don't, yeah, yeah. don't even be mistaken. But mm-hmm. I think, like, you know, I could I could show them that I had a range of styles and things like that. And, um, and that you had a foundation. I had a foundation yeah. and, like, life drawing and well, stuff yeah, like that. Well, yeah, they've probably been in the position of, you know, having student after student come through with... Your portfolio is full of nothing but anime and manga, and and I mean, it, when I was when I was going through um, the art institute, uh, I had teachers who would expressly say n- none of the projects you turn in can be anime. It's yeah, and that that's kind of like it's just well, a, that's it, that's an extreme. Yeah, yeah. That's that, an extreme. I mean, like. <sighs> It doesn't need to be like that extreme, like a one way or another and make it or break it. But you do need to like show mm-hmm. that you can. I don't know how to. Well, like, I think need, the, yeah. the way one of them explained it was. I mean, this happens to people who learn. Like, like I originally learned to draw by copying out of comic books. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So for years and years, I couldn't really draw. I yeah, could copy exactly, out of comic exactly. books. Exactly. Yeah, right. I think and that's it's the like problem. a lot of a lot of anime because it's designed to be quickly and easily animated yeah, simplified uh-huh. it's it's very formulaic mm-hmm. and there's not, again there's nothing wrong with that but it's like you're, there's instead of learning how to draw organically you're learning how to repeat a pattern and you can't so they, learn to break the you can't break the rules like anime or whatever unless you know the rules so you need to know the foundation well, you, you can't to, break them intelligently yeah, anyway. inte- yeah right yeah you're yeah exactly absolutely right. yeah so so i mean it's it's it wasn't that they they didn't like anime a lot of them actually mm-hmm. one in particular i know was a big fan oh yeah, yeah yeah it's just that he wanted to see that you had more than just your ability to copy pre-existing yeah more characters. and more range yeah, exactly. and yeah. more range, or and, if you and, didn't, and God you forbid, to force you out of it. God forbid, just expose your students to something more than what they were fixated on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no. yeah definitely. There's a whole world of art There's out there. There's a whole and, world right. of art. So you you uh, you did uh, you did something I did not do, uh-huh. which is you got through grad school in the two year formula. I got yeah. through in three years because I honestly wanted to slow down. I I had worked full time all the way through undergrad. Oh, see, I didn't do that, and I I, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, and and more power to you. So, but you you did the two year program, uh-huh. which is, by the way, for uh, I know we've said it before, but for anybody who hasn't heard this podcast before, or heard this before, uh, grad school is hard. It is. It, it's and yeah. even if you're an arts artsy person, it's yeah. hard. It's but, yeah. it's so much more work than most people can even mm-hmm. imagine. You don't sleep most of the time. Yeah. The idea that you were in a dorm kind of blows oh, my well, mind. I, only the first like quarter or okay. whatever. Well, no, and you went yeah. out and got yourself yeah. an apartment yeah. where you could actually <laughs> set your own sleep hours? It was a carriage house, and the floor in the kitchen was the dirt from the ground. What? You know, it was on, like, uh, Mopas Avenue or something in Savannah, but, like, This does not sound like a legal apartment. I don't think it was illegal. And, like, our, our landlord guy would just, like, he's like, oh, I need to f- do something in there. And he would just, like, go in and, like, not... I don't know, like, sometimes I'd be home and he's in the apartment. So I hope this was a very inexpensive place to stay. Yeah, I mean, it was like $400 <laughs> a month, which, I mean, to me at the time in was Sa- like In Savannah lot, in, the, yeah. in 2007 through nine, that was actually incredibly cheap. Yeah. But still. Ooh. But, I mean, like, the floor was the dirt. <laughs> so you were you were willing to put up with some pretty rough stuff just to make sure that you like got through SCAD without having to get a job foot. or yeah, something, right? Yeah, it was time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, wow, that's that's a whole story unto itself. Not, yeah, my parents were, came to visit me, and they were like, this is not acceptable. So what was? let's just kind of flash forward and talk a little bit about your experience in the illustration department at SCAD in Savannah, by the way. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we made that. Uh, I guess we have made that clear. Like, I went to SCAD. Atlanta for grad yeah. school. So, um, so I mean, how did you like the illustration department in Savannah? I, I mean, liked it a lot. Yeah. Um, the uh, the only thing, that, like, we, there was a lot of foundational courses, which was, was good. I mean, I learned some techniques that I wasn't familiar with. I took a computer drawing class that had me f- crying on the first day because I... Okay, okay, back up. T- uh, tell, you told us a little bit about this uh, prior to getting on the mics, but tell us why. Why why did that freak you out so much? In 2000, uh, as of 2000, and, well, that was probably 2008 when I took that class, I, I had used a computer to play solitaire and check my email. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, and, uh, yeah. So that's about um, all I used a computer for. So, I mean, I knew of Photoshop and stuff and um, 
I, wow. I'd played in Microsoft Paint <laughs> before. I mean, I, I liked art online and things. I looked at stuff like that, but I'm like, yeah, that I'll never be able to do that. And, and of course, for <laughs> anybody who doesn't know your art, you do art almost exclusively yeah. in the computer now. So that this <laughs> is that really funny? interesting to me. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? How so that you happened? you you really kind of freaked out a little bit on yeah, the first time. The teacher who was um, I can't recall the name of at this moment. He took me aside and was like, "You'll be fine. We're going through this step by step." And he was a great teacher. Um, I wish I could remember his name. But so, um, so he took his time and calmed you down. Yeah. And, oh, because I'm and very connected high with strong. you. Yeah. <laughs> so of course, I, like, I mean, I love learning new things. I love teaching myself new things. The day I don't learn something new, or I don't want to learn anything new, is like the end of the world. I, I, I shouldn't think ever. You, you have to have yeah, that as an you artist. Be like that. You um, have to have it. But if I don't like get something, I do get frustrated with myself because I'm like, well, I should know how to do this, but. I mean, I'd never done it before, so why so you, would I have known you, how to do it? You have a difficult time forgiving yourself. Oh, I'm super hard on myself. Hmm. Um, but um, so, yeah, I was like super stressed out and like, I'll never understand this. And it was it was really a lot of fun. Like I learned a lot of foundations from Photoshop and we actually built a website through Photoshop, which I'm like nowadays, I'm like. Yeah, nobody would do that now. Does anybody do that? I mean, so, but I learned a lot of basics from that class. That was probably one of my more like, uh, like helpful classes. There's something that you talked about prior to us getting on the mic that really leads into what happened for you after school. At least mm -hmm. that's my estimation. And I mm -hmm. think yours as well, which is you, you took that two year program, which means an accelerated program, because mm -hmm. like I said, I did grad school in three years and it was still really hard and really, and I barely slept. Yeah. So I can only imagine just how much effort and work that was you were very focused, you were very driven, and you didn't really take the time to network. Yes. If I could go back and slap myself upside the head, I would say, Catherine, why are you doing this? <laughs> uh, because you need to, when you're going to school or in any job, you need to think about, like, what's my end goal? Well, I want to meet people and get a job. Well, I was not doing that. I was fulfilling class assignments, making straight A's, but I'm not... I'm not talking to my professors. I'm not making friends with anybody. I mean, you know, I was friendly, but I'm not like hanging out and, you know, seeing what kind of like things like artistic things other people are into that we could like maybe collaborate together and things like that. Mm -hmm. I was very like self uh, focused. I mean, not, not necessarily in a bad way, but I was internalized like everything with my art. So I didn't definitely didn't reach out to my professors. I didn't go to like career fairs like, for some dumb reason. Um, you know, if you, and even, you were, you were newly married really. Weren't yeah. You? And I mean, God bless being, I love my husband. We're, we're just happy as clams. But I think that like, if I had to look back, I think a lot of that was like, well, we're focusing on our marriage and we're happy and I got to plan a wedding and, you know, we got to do all this. So I was kind of like... Okay, so you, you weren't married yet when you were in grad school. No, I mean, we got married like my second semester or something So, but like it, it was... It was um, semester. It was yeah, still, we got married in the middle of grad school. Even though you guys had known each other for a long time, it yeah. was still kind of a, a, a new romance yeah. in, in a way. And you guys were uh, focusing on each other, which is which is yeah. fantastic, and you were focusing on school. So you weren't taking the time <sighs> yeah. to uh, take part of the social life that should come with any college experience. Exactly, because I think in my head, if I can guess what I was thinking, is like, well, now I'm taking all these classes, so when I get out of here, I'm going to be an illustrator so I can go illustrate, right? Right. That's how it's going to happen. <laughs> but mm, no, you you need to like know people to get jobs. You need to put <laughs> so yourself you need out to, there. Like, yeah, unless you're just like illustrating your own stories and paying yourself money. <laughs> you, you need and to... Uh, forgive me yeah. if I'm wrong, but based on uh, what you were talking about earlier with social media, I would say you probably weren't getting on social media oh, too no, much. Oh, no, at all. Like I didn't even have... Like by the time I graduated, my... How old is my... My Facebook account's only seven years old. So what mm -hmm. is it, 2010? So everybody was on Facebook by 2010. Right. Except me. Except so, for you. Yeah. <laughs> like, I wasn't even... I was on DeviantArt. What? No, I got on DeviantArt when I was in SCAD. But honestly, DeviantArt's not... <laughs> Only other, like, little artists are on DeviantArt. Art directors aren't on DeviantArt. I mean, you know, like, maybe at the time. So it, it's... <laughs> I was on there a little bit. I mean, that's about as much social media as our social interaction online as I did. I didn't like 
you know, even when I graduate, I do like Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, any of that. Right. Um, and uh, unfortunately, uh, and this is something that maybe you weren't quite at the point where you felt the need to um, self-promote yet mm-hmm. or market, but unfortunately, when you're an illustrator, or 3D artist, whatever, in the beginning, it really has to be a large percentage of your time is focused on marketing. And, oh, yeah. and I've heard I've heard as much in the in in your early years, as much as eighty percent of your time should be spent showing people your work and oh, putting in your name out agree. there yeah. and only twenty percent of your time producing that work. And then as you become more well known and yeah. get more work, then that equation or that mm-hmm. uh, that uh, ratio flips and you can get to the point to where you can promote 20% of the time and work ideally 80 to 90% of the time but that's later yeah no it and is so it is you you were working 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 mm-hmm. and focusing and a lot of people would say good job that's what you should be doing but you have to have another part of the equation and exactly. you weren't you weren't really doing that at that yeah. point no i mean i was i was doing like okay i graduated school and I, I, for about six months, I did, we were kind of like, I mean, I was applying to like, you know, sending my resume out to Hallmark and like sending my resume to places and things like that. But I was doing like my own personal work, like, you know, just example pages of like a fairy tale book or something and sending them to like agencies and anything. So and were, I did you were putting your work I mean, out I there. I was putting it out there somewhat. I mean, I, w- I wasn't putting it really online for anybody to see, but I was like sending it to people and I did find the agency in that, at that point, like Great. that's where I got my agent. But uh, again, like I said, I only got like they one weren't or two getting, jobs. They yeah, weren't getting yeah. much work. I mean, you can't live off like one or two jobs right. a year. So, um, and you, you didn't have an exclusive with them, did you? No. I okay. Mean, you, you couldn't have lived off of it. No, yeah. no, no, no. So, uh, yeah, so at that point, then I did, I mean, not the, if I could go back now, I probably wouldn't do this. I moved back to Mississippi, which, I mean, so I could be close to family. So is, it, I mean, was that, was that decided at, at the end? Were you planning that all along? Were you No, I wasn't you know? really planning that. I mean, I wanted to move to like New York or some big city or something like that. But I mean, we were kind of out of money and I mean, I, I knew like, I don't know why we really did it. I mean, we just because we were living in Savannah and I wasn't getting anything in Savannah. So I was thought, well, I can do the same thing and like send out my portfolio and stuff in Mississippi. You just felt like you could continue doing the same, same thing marketing and, that and you were doing. my family, right. which is true. But I mean, if you're in a, if you go back to a smaller town, it's, it's still, you're like, Oh, well I can do everything online. Well, that's not necessarily true. You need to like still be able to like meet people, go out and stuff like that. So I would even like moving to Atlanta later on in life, I would say like even, you know, it's, I'm still most of my like interactions with people now are face to face. Well, um, you and I met face to face. Yeah, exactly. And so only like, after that did you and I become friends on Facebook. Yeah, exactly. And, and all Things of this like other that. Yeah. So, I mean, you still like I probably wouldn't I probably would not have moved back because then I'll move back and I was like, oh, I'll do this for like a year and then I'll move to a big city. And that, no, it was six years later mm-hmm. before I like so left even, Mississippi. So even though there are people who, <laughs> yeah, who make it back and it's, it's even though there are people easy. who make it big on on social media and, and end up getting careers out of it, it's still much more common for people to uh, live in a common area, whether it be New York or mm-hmm, whether it be mm-hmm. someplace in California or here in Atlanta is now a, a hotbed for creative uh, people. Definitely. And you can meet, make connections face to face. I know that you, you and I have now had a lunch together mm-hmm. and drank and, and enjoyed conversation. I know I could probably work with you. Well, yeah. As, as where yeah. just meeting someone online, that's much more difficult. And I mean, even like, okay, if I, if I'm like the go back to my little hometown in Mississippi, I'm, Now I'm the only like creative person around and I get depressed and stuff. Even like being in a big city like this, I'm around other like-minded people like that. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, so even if you're not like trying to like expand your portfolio, you're around other like-minded people. So you're going to, you're going to do better. I mean, very inspirational. Exactly. You're going to feel better, I guess. So you went back to Mississippi with your husband and Mm -hmm. you did what? I was like, well... We, we got to we gotta eat and have groceries, <laughs> so I need to get a job. So I worked, I got a job at a, uh, anybody in Mississippi is going to know what C Spire is. It was called Cellular South at the time, but it's a phone company. And I sold phones to angry people for years. 
in years. So and how long was it? Uh, well, I, about four years there. Four years. Yeah, okay. four years. And then like I took about a year and then I sold Big Green Eggs. And then I moved to Atlanta and then I got a job. Okay, let's 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 yeah. let's uh, linger Sorry. at that 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 transition point from mm-hmm. Mississippi back home mm-hmm. to Atlanta. At what place were you and your husband at mentally, mm. financially, otherwise, when you made the decision that, you know what, I got to get out of here again? Yeah, I, exactly. Like, I just knew, I, was, I mean, I was really depressed. Uh, this was about 2013, I right. think. Yeah, four years. Okay. So this was about 2013. I was so depressed. I mean, like, I was... I was still drawing every day. I mean, I I never, I mean, I draw, like, what do I do for fun? I draw. What do I do when I'm angry? I draw. What do I do for when I'm watching TV? I'm drawing. I mean, right. like, I don't, like, that's my hobby and my profession. And by the way, that's badass. <laughs> well, no, I mean, like, that's like all, I don't, I don't play video games. I don't like, you know, I don't do, uh, don't exercise, <laughs> which is not good. Um, but uh, all I do is draw. So I was still drawing every day, but I wasn't doing it professionally. I mean, like I'd get a random job here or there, but I was like, I've got to, we've got to move to a bigger city. I've got to try to do something. I mean, I feel like if I'm just going to keep on in the same rut that I'm in, we're never going to, I'm never going to fulfill that. And luckily God bless my husband. Cause he was like, sure. He, I mean, he was like, yeah, he works, at, he's a manager at Walmart. And he's like, there's a Walmart everywhere. I don't care where we go. <laughs> so basically with his help and support, he, uh, he got a job at a Walmart in Atlanta. I mean, really, we like, basically we're like, we didn't know where to move. I was living in Mississippi. We were looking at Seattle because it's, uh, I'm at, I've been to New York a bunch and I didn't really want to move there because it's so like crazy yeah it's like a whole nother it's overwhelming especially for somebody from a small area yeah i mean i do like to visit but i don't really i wouldn't really want to live there i still want somewhere where i have a car i mean like you know i wanted i don't know i just guess i'm you wanted something that that felt like big city but still felt like home exactly like i'm kind of i have that small mind mentality even though i'm like oh i'm pushing off the small town small mind or small town (laughs) small Small town. What you I said say? small mind. No, I have a big mind. <laughs> and, and, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I had the uh, small town mentality. But um, so I still knew. I was like, okay, Seattle's. I hear it's really cool, and that's where all like the hipsters are. So I was like, Seattle or Atlanta, because Atlanta's kind of still in the south, but it's a big city. And I was like, and, and the accent goes over a little better. Yeah, here. the accent than, goes than over it better. It's a bunch Seattle. of rednecks. I mean, you know, there's. I a, had to mention that at some point during this podcast. <laughs> I don't have an accent. What are you talking no. about? <laughs> and uh, it's really funny because I don't hear my husband have an accent. He's from Mississippi too. But um, anyway, the uh, I was like Seattle. Okay, I even bought a book at Barnes & Noble about, like, Seattle. <laughs> and so I was right. like, we're going to move here. And then I was, like, reading about seasonal affective disorder or whatever. And I was like, oh, this is really far. How am I going to get a U-Haul out here? Uh, Atlanta, that's that's only seven hours away. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so we can drive that. Right. So we really, like, moved to Atlanta. And, like, uh, we didn't know anybody. We didn't have a reason. We just moved to Atlanta. Right. You just mm-hmm. felt like you knew that there was more creative work. Yeah, I just here, knew there. Sure. I mean, for I mean, just statistically, there had to be more creative and work. So I, I've made big leaps from one place to the other, and sometimes without the safety net of having somebody in my life with a job. So yeah, see, I don't. Uh, if I, I didn't have Rupa, I probably couldn't. I have a lot of respect that. for anybody who's willing to up and just go like that. And so you did that, and I th- actually I think. Jeremiah kind of did the same oh, really? thing when he came to Atlanta. He was just like, it's time to go. It's <laughs> well, time to come. Yeah, my, my wife had an opportunity to move down here for oh, her job. Yeah. And we're so like, a similar thing. Well, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah that's great. I mean, sometimes like the best things can just happen right. from taking chances. So, so you took the chance, you came down, and then you. I, I think you told us earlier that you sold Big Green Eggs. Tell us, tell us what that is, a first of all. A Big Green Egg is a ceramic grill that you can um, cook a variety of things on. It's very, They're very useful. Actually, I highly recommend them. They're expensive, but they're really good. Wait, wait. Um, wait. You are not actually selling them. I'm not them. a representative of Big Green Egg. Where's my check? But um, you were at one point. I was, you, were, you were selling um, them. I got a, like, because when I first moved here, Rupa got a job at a Walmart, and um, I got... Um, I went to a temp agency because I was like, oh, okay. While I'm looking for a real job, I need to like find a something to pay. Something I need money. We gotta right. brush our teeth and have groceries. Uh, I have cats I have to feed. So we, uh, so that temp job hooked me up with the um, the place that sold the big green eggs, and so I worked there for about a year. And I, when and then um, 
I ended up uh, applying to Six Flags Over Georgia. Oh, right, right. And drew caricatures. And for um, uh, I'll I'll plug my old boss mm-hmm. for Fazen Arts. Fazen Arts, and I did right. that, and that was 2013 ish, 2014. I think it might have been that. That might have been the summer 2014. Mm-hmm. And so then, you were drawing funny mm-hmm. faces at Six Flags for your supper, mm-hmm. <sighs> and hated it. It, it's really <laughs> hot in Georgia. I'm not sure if you're aware. And, um, and that was the year that the song um, Harlem Shake and Gangnam, Gangnam Style oh, came funny. out. So that I heard them about 30 times a day. Oh, through, drawing, the P, through the PA through system? Through the PA system. So I was like, oh, God, take and, me and, now. And the reference <laughs> about uh, so hot in Georgia, uh, all the booths for a caricature were outdoors at Six yep. Flags where it's all pavement. And so yep. it's even hotter there than it is in Georgia in general. I know because I used to do the same job for a a while yeah so. and oh it's like our it's so it's, funny it's yeah. like our rite of passage here uh, <laughs> we, we both know a lot of artists uh who started out uh before they went off to college or mm-hmm. before they went to grad school or whatever uh and worked at that exact same job yeah or at the t-shirt booth right next yes, door i know there were a bunch uh, of great guys over there yeah I, I did enjoy um I, I enjoyed the people and stuff. I just didn't really enjoy the job. I mean, it was like physically, I mean, not demanding. I, I'm not digging ditches. Hey, that heat, that heat I mean, is like, terrible. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was, it's, it's hot. And I'm outside and I'm a little frail, you know, vampire kid that's like <laughs> pasty and doesn't go outside. So, but you were doing art. And that's I was doing art. A, that's it what was I told more of an art job than I'd ever right. had before. That's what I was telling myself while I was still doing. Yeah, I exactly. love doing caricature and I actually still yeah. enjoy doing live caricature. Oh, it's yeah. the, it's that, that particular environment was very hard to mm-hmm. deal with for this and oh, i love yeah. like caricature like yeah. looking like um i mean a lot of character design is caricature to a certain degree i mean mm-hmm. but you know like it's a very valuable skill to have absolutely uh i just that that's not like the ideal you know out in the summer heat is not the ideal situation but um mm-hmm. but uh while i was doing that i was also taking i also every tuesday at um here's a plug um every tuesday at the uh Portfolio Center in Atlanta, they have a figure drawing class. So I was going to that because I just love drawing okay, great. naked people. So you <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and uh so that so I met someone there that had worked at Floyd County, which is um where I'm currently employed, and uh, they told, were telling me about Floyd County, and I've never heard of them. And they were like the people that make Archer, and they were like, You should apply. And Rock on. So we've kind I of come am. full circle at this full point. Full circle. I really enjoyed your story and getting to know you. And this has been this has been a really great recording session actually. Oh, this is fun. I've learned a lot and and I relate to so much of what you've gone I know, through, especially, especially coming from, from a small, small town. town yeah. And, it's yeah, it's yeah. a stru- it's a stru- especially if you don't have support. I mean, right. that's a struggle. It's a yeah. huge struggle. Let's see. Yeah. Small town, master's degrees, did caricature. I'm kind of a third wheel. Yeah, You're a third no, wheel. What, what are you doing here? You were so quiet for this <laughs> I know, one. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's like you, you <laughs> we know, just you, have a lot in You common. have all this reminiscing to do. And yeah. I, I had a couple questions, but it, you, know, yeah, you draw. Yeah, no, you did. You I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that you don't get into the drawing talk a little bit more because you love to draw. It's not what I focus on. Though. No, it's not yeah, my I thing. See what you're saying, it's, it's a means to an end. It's right. Well, see, like what you do to me is like rocket science, black magic. So I always said that it's voodoo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a voodoo. I don't know. Hey, you just you sacrifice a goat. Oh, okay. you do the chance, <laughs> and right. the 3D uh, happens. Firstborn. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> all right, gotcha. Um, so, well, do we have anything else to ask? How about the typical? And I think we've kind of covered most of this, but the typical question at the end of this is: Do you have any advice for any young person who might want to do the same kind of things that you do? Well, I would say the biggest thing is like have work on your foundational skills. Um, you know, if you decide to go into caricature design, there's plenty of wonderful, uh, you know, tutorials and things, and I'm sure we'll have some and eventually. And I mean, there's ways to learn, but you know, you need to have strong foundational skills. And I would also say networking is very important. I cannot emphasize it enough. It doesn't matter how beautiful your drawings are. If nobody's looking at them, you're not getting paid. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. You know, mm-hmm. you want to, you want to reach as many people as you can. And I mean, you know, even if you're antisocial, you need to, I was just going to say that, that can, <laughs> that, that, that can be something that's 
very difficult it for is. artist types to overcome. I mean, I'm very antisocial, but I mean, like, I have not seen that. Oh, I'm yet. faking it. Like, oh, no, no, seriously, okay, okay, if okay. I could, if I could have a job watching Law and Order and drawing and uh, like eating pizza every day, I'd never leave my house. But I can't. <laughs> but unfortunately, and that would but, be but disgusting. A, a, a lot of introverts wind up in yes. art because they're partly because they're introverted, and and mm-hmm. and obviously not just that, but. And it can be very difficult to break those introvert habits and then put yourself out there. But you have to yes, if you want to make a living to. at it. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's good to be self. I think being introvert is good because you're self motivated. You can, you know, you can work on your own. You don't need like yeah. outside interference or stimulation. But you do have to reach out and uh, network with people and make, you know, make friends, make connections. So. Mm-hmm. Th- this might go off a bit, but actually, one of the things that was really important for me when I was switching from switching careers into an art career. Mm-hmm is kind of acknowledging and embracing the fact that I'm, I'm very much an introvert mm-hmm. and not so much like trying to fix myself, quote unquote, but just, you know, working, working with that for yeah. the strengths that it Being offers. Aware because of it. Yeah. That, was, that was just a very important part of yeah, my, my exactly. development. I'm still working on it. I, I, think I, we I still are. backslide into just wanting to, <laughs> right. you know, hermit myself in my room. And, oh, I, de- I definitely, you know. I de- still don't understand how Twitter works 100%. So <laughs> I'm oh, like, I, I'm you're de- not the only one. Oh, it's like, yeah, Actually, it's very the, confusing. So. The online stuff is easier for me. For me, it's the, it's the in-person stuff. Like oh, I'll, yeah. I'll go to a networking event and I see people talking. I'm like, what are they talking about? They don't know each other. Uh, I'm, well, yeah. And I mean, people I'm, laugh when I say that, but that's literally my thought. Like, I have nothing to say to you because I don't know you. And I'm like, well, just the, get to know them. I'm I don't a cute know them. Southerner, so I can like, <laughs> I'll just say something dumb, and we interject. And the, oh, she's she's funny. You just use your folksy wiles. Yeah, I just use my folksy wiles to to trick people. All right, well, Catherine, I want to thank you so much for coming onto the show. This has been so much fun, yeah. and I can't wait till this episode comes out. Everybody, go check out Catherine's work. If you decide to hire her based on listening to our show let her know about let it let me know yeah and uh and by all means share this episode with at least two people and then they can share with two people and then they can share with two people and then they yeah. can share with two people <laughs> there we go thanks for listening everybody If you have any uh, comments or feedback or just want to connect with us, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Just search for Creator Forge. Please review us on iTunes or your podcatcher of choice. It lets us know how we're doing and helps other people to find us and hopefully let us know that we're worth listening to. And uh, as always, you can find all of our information and past, present, and future content at creatorforge.com. That's right. And thanks again for listening, everybody. We'll see you back here next month for another great episode. 